let's go to our topic today. Um, we are going to discuss a very important topic in daily endodontic practice, which is the basics of endodontic instrumentation. And the subtitle for this webinar is about what we know and what we should do, because there are basics, but they can be applied in a different way. So let's see uh, um, uh, what I mean about that. First of all, I would like to uh, uh, introduce myself because uh, many of you might not know me. Uh, and uh, before I start introducing myself, I have to highlight that this webinar is the first in a series of webinars and courses along the year, the coming year until uh, 2023, May 2023. And we will start by uh, uh, online webinar. And on the 25th of June, we will have a uh, physical in-person course in Dubai in Total Core Academy. And I will share with you at the end of this presentation, the contact in order to ask about the, uh, how to attend and uh, what uh, about this course. So I'm Ahmed Shawghi. I'm a lecturer in the uh, Department of Indodontics, Cairo University. Uh, my practice is limited to endodontics. Um, I am an international clinical advisor for Avalon and Dental Perfect in China, which is uh, uh, the host uh, uh, of this uh, 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 presentation. Uh, also, I am uh, a silver certified member in uh, a static and endodontics uh, group. Uh, we share. Uh, uh, endodontic knowledge and clinical uh, tips and tricks in a feasible and teachable in a repeatable uh, way. Um, this is part of our educational activity uh, um, uh, in the University of UGI, Spain. And uh, we uh, have, I have some research in endodontics from uh, stem cell research to uh, 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 regenerative endodontics uh, in the International Endodontic Journal. And um, also this year, I was blessed by publishing a, a case series with my friends from the USA in the Journal of Indodontics about non-surgical endo. And one of our courses uh, with Total Core Academy and uh, Dental Perfect will be about uh, retreatment. So we will get introduced to uh, these topics during the year. Uh, recently, actually, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we published a, a systematic review about dental trauma uh, uh, and vital pipe therapy. You can find me in Roots. You can find me in Roots this year also. And by the way, uh, this magazine of Roots in 2022 uh, uh, has a, a, an article about the technique of shaping using the MG3 Blue uh, files. And um, uh, at the end, I will leave the link for this article in the uh, chat. And last thing about this introduction that you can scan this QR code to find all articles that I have written on the website of Stel Italiano in uh, And I would like to thank Total Core Academy and uh, Deep Perfect for uh, making this webinar and the uh, successive courses possible uh, to be made. Okay, the primary objective in our endodontic treatment is the treatment and prevention of apical periodontitis. Of course, we do all the procedures in order to treat apical periodontitis and prevent its recurrence uh, uh, in our cases. So uh, you can see here that we have large periapical lesion um, that can be assumed as a cystic lesion, but with our diagnosis, with accurate diagnosis, we have reached the final decision that this is an endodontic uh, uh, lesion and with only non-surgical endodontics, we can reach healing. As you see here, the two years recall shows almost complete healing and we continue to follow up the cases uh, uh, until five years and we have complete healing and prevention of apical periodontitis. So we uh, um, fulfilled our objective by treatment of apical periodontitis and we prevented its recurrence. Here also, ongoing healing, 18 months recall, uh, non-surgical retreatment recalls. So the only way, the only way to know that your protocol is perfect and that it solves the problem in the tooth is to follow up your patient. 
no one will tell you if your technique is right or wrong or missing something unless you yourself decide that by recalls. So we have different steps in root canal preparation, starting from the diagnosis and decision making and treatment planning. Then we go into the uh, uh, operative procedure. We start with access cavity preparation. And when we ask ourselves which step, which procedure in the course of the endodontic treatment is important and lead to healing? Is it access preparation? Is it shaping? Is it arrogant delivery? Arrogant activation? Obturation? post endodontic restoration? Actually, we need to achieve excellence and perfection in all steps up to the final restoration in order to achieve healing of the apical periodontitis. And this is a very important uh, uh, tip to highlight. Let's go into our topic today. Uh, I hope I didn't make it long. Um, root canal shaping, I consider it the difficult easy. Why it is a difficult easy? Because in theory, it's easy. You determine your working length, you go with the file, shape the root canal, rinse the root canal, obturate the root canal and put your corona restoration. Theoretically, this is easy, but when you deal intraoperatively with the tooth, things are different. There is no gap between theory and practice. There is no gap. Things we uh, uh, teach in theory, we applied in practice. We try to bridge the gap that you think that exists in this. And it is difficult because we are dealing with anatomy. So I cannot imagine that any one of you can think that when you treat one lower six in one patient, you will find exactly the same anatomy in the following patient in the lower six. Of course not. On the contrary, you may find different anatomy between a lower six on the right side and a lower six on the left side in the same patient. Anatomy, when we're dealing with anatomy, variability is the rule. That's why we cannot, we cannot fix a piece of metal a piece of metal like the files to fit every anatomy. That's why we have to put our sequence. We have to put our selection for the motion, for the type of the alloy, for the uh, 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 management of the anatomy. Uh, also, let's look at this case. We have a dilacerated mandibular second molar with poor accessibility intraorally because the patient has a, a limited mouth opening. And how can we manage this case? Can we just take the same sequence in the mesia root, which is gentle curved, gently curved, the same as in the other mesia root? Of course not. We have to combine. We have to understand what the instrument and the endodontic motor give us from options in order to modify our treatment sequence to reach successful shaping. And don't forget, we are not doing shaping just for reaching the apex. We are doing shaping for cleaning. I want to shape the root canal in order to be able to deliver my irrigation as close as possible to the apical part of the root canal. And that's the reason or that's the way I can treat apical periodontitis and prevent its recurrence. Of course, we have different curvatures, the elbow curves, the banana curves. Each type of curve has a different management protocol. Even within the same file system, we have to modify in order to fit our instruments into this curve or that curve. The abruptness is a problem like the dilaceration because this uh, might lead to uh, uh, another, okay, there are, no, I don't have any, uh, um, because they are telling me in the control room that uh, some uh, participants are waiting, but I don't have any annotation about the uh, waiting area. So uh, they might be entered by the control room. Uh, back to the uh, topic, we have, uh, uh, when we have an abrupt curve, 
this is a predisposition to file separation or ledging and transportation or sometimes perforation. So we need to know how to deal with this curves. Don't worry about the combination. We combine a lot of file system because this case was done two or three years ago. So I will teach you how to do this to reach this uh, uh, result. So the key for successful shaping of the root canal in order to be able to rinse and irrigate the root canal system and clean it and disinfect it is to know your instrument. And in order to know your instrument, because we are not technicians, we are clinicians. Indodontist has a lot of techniques to apply. And we sometimes forget that at the end of the day, we are clinicians, not technicians. So I cannot tell you, take this file and put it in the root canal and rotate it uh, uh, um, in, with that speed and you will reach. No, you have to understand what the design of the file, what is the motion of the file, and can I change the motion or not? And you have to uh, know uh, uh, the metallurgy of your file because we have a lot of limitation in certain alloys and we have a lot of privileges in another alloys like the alloy that we are discussing today, the MG3 Blue uh, uh, martensitic files. So now, as I said, the criteria for instrument selection is about knowing the kinematics, the way the file moves in the motor, and we have uh, uh, advanced motor uh, right now, like the ZRF from uh, D-Perfect, uh, and we can modify the kinematics of the files to rotate, to reciprocate, to combine these motions. I will let you know that. The second criterion is the metallurgy. You have to know the metallurgical properties of your file to be able to select the size, the taper, the, the, the location of your preparation, whether coronal, full lens, single lens from uh, uh, beginning to the end, we will know that. And also the design, the clinically relevant design. I'm not telling you open the book and uh, uh, the, the instrumentation chapter and uh, revise the design of all file. No, we need to know certain few design features that allow you to perform better in your practice. So let's start with the kinematics. And as you see here in this slide, this is the, the perfect motor, the ZR app with an integrated apex locator. And we will have uh, uh, um, uh, a full session now uh, within this presentation about how to achieve accuracy from uh, your apex locator and use it the best. So we have three types of motions. We have the continuous rotation, we have the rotational reciprocation, or we can uh, 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 say reciprocating motion, and we have combination of both. So the rotation, we can rotate 360 degrees in any direction. And sometimes when the file is locked in the dentin, the motor has a sensor that can uh, uh, sense the exceeding the torque limit uh, that you have adjusted or preset in the motor. So it rewind or uh, unscrew the file in order to avoid a breakage. This is called the O2 reverse function. It's not reciprocation. It's just to protect the file from breakage. And then once the file is uh, away from the point of uh, engagement, it can rotate, completes the rotation in 360. So it's pure 360 degrees, whether clockwise or counterclockwise according to the type of the file. Also, we have the rotational reciprocation or the interrupted rotation. The reciprocation or the interrupted rotation is about to divide the 360 rotation into increments so that the stresses will be below the fatigue limit of the instrument. That's why we rotate in certain direction with an angle, let's say 150 or 170, and we get back 50. So 150, 170, and we get back 50, the net is 120, right? Then we repeat it two times again to complete the 360. This is called the interrupted rotation. In the end, the file will rotate, but not one time. It will be divided on three times, for example. And the adjustment of this is easy in the motor, like you will see in the coming slides. OK. Now, we have a question, an important question. 
can we use rotary file like the MG3 Blue in reciprocation? Absolutely, we can use. Of course, it is time consuming because the, the 360 uh, 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 rotation is divided on three, for example, and you can divide it more, but uh, on three times. So it takes longer to achieve one rotation. But on the other hand, the value of using files in reciprocation that it uh, shows better negotiation of the curves and double curves, it uh, increases the resistance to cyclic fatigue because all the stresses are well below the fatigue limit of the instrument. So the lifetime or the time to fracture of the instrument is very long. So instrument can live longer with you without fracture. Uh, and it avoids transportation, of course, because it has imitation of the watch winding motion that we use in manual file. Okay. Let's see here. I adjusted the motion in the motor for 170 in the forward direction, because this is the direction of the blade and 50 in the reverse, which is the unloading. I usually prefer to do the pre-flaring with uh, uh, a hard alloy, like the gold alloy, the MJ3 gold, and I complete with the uh, flexible Martin Static blue files. So here in this case with Radix Indomolaris, we have uh, a lot of curvature. I started with the MG3 gold because it has high cutting efficiency and a strong file, 25 or six to the outer wall to pre-flare, to pre-flare, just to remove the uh, coronal resistance. And we will discuss, of course, the pre-flaring. Then we switch and go down. This is a crown down. We go down with the MG3 blue easily now because we remove all the coronal resistance. And also the file can go easily down the canal without creating transportation, without breakage, following the anatomy, maintaining the original shape of the root canal, but widening uh, 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 due to the reciprocation. This is uh, a personal preference to me that to use in difficult cases, the rotary file in reciprocation in order to impose a safety factor on your preparation. The Third motion is a combined motion. It's called adaptive torque rotation. This is an innovation in the motor because it is a torque triggered change in kinematics. What does this mean? When you are using the continuous rotation, the rotary file in rotation, 360 rotation in the forward direction, and you are adjusting the torque limit to 2.5, for example. So once you enter the root canal and start cutting in dentin, and you, your file face some narrow area and the torque or the friction exceeds the preset 2.5 Newton centimeter, then the motor automatically will switch the motion into a reciprocating motion. So the file rotating and then faces some difficulty, the automatically the motor will switch to reciprocation to relieve the difficult area and then again, completes the rotation. This is very smart and it makes you go with the motion that you used to do, the continuous rotation, 360 rotation, and at the same time protects your file and your canal shape from errors. So the adaptive torque uh, rotation or adaptive torque reverse is the uh, uh, torque induced change in kinematics, safe and predictable shaping of curved and double curved canals, allow safe mechanical glide pass of severely curved canals, can be used with any file design because as we said, we have to respect the blades and then we can use any file, rotary file in reciprocating motion. This is an application of this perspective. And we can easy, sel easily select a preset uh, uh, clockwise and counterclockwise increments, 170, 50, 2010, uh, uh, one eight, any, any, any increments you can choose in your uh, ZRF motor. So 
just to uh, give a take home message about the combined kinematics in the uh, ZR wrap motor that we need it for safety. We need it for safe shaping of curved, severely curved, double curved root canals. We need for shaping severely canals with very small radius or abrupt curvature. And we need it for increased time to fracture, meaning that I want to prolong the lifetime of the instrument without fracture. That was all about the kinematics. And now we are going to the metallurgy. I will discuss with you some history about the metallurgy. We started with the stainless steel, and then we go to the uh, super elastic nickel titanium, the silver, like uh, the back in the days, the old pro taper. If you, if you know, we do not use it right now because uh, with uh, today's perspective, it's uh, a bad alloy. Uh, and we reach the heat treated nickel titanium like the MG3 blue. And we have also heat treated uh, nickel titanium, the MG3 gold. And we will discuss it later in courses and following webinars. So uh, the, the, the file that is, uh, made of nickel titanium or netinol uh, have two phases. The austenitic phase, which is a stiff high cutting efficiency and the martensitic phase, the low or no shape memory. It tends to maintain its shape inside the root canal taking the original shape of the canal without tending to spring back uh, flexibility and uh, also high cyclic fatigue resistance because it is soft, but it has a little bit lower cutting efficiency than the gold heat treated alloys. What we do nowadays is that we increased, we increased the amount of the martensite microstructure during manufacturing when a, a, a perfect endo uh, manufacture a heat treated file, they increase the amount of martensitic particles and microstructure in the file and decrease the amount of austenitic uh, 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 portion. So that in a clinical situation, when the file enters the, the root canal, it will follow the anatomy. Also, it is pre-bendable, so you can enter a restricted access like the mesiobuccal root canal in a maxillary second molar, which is against your position in the dental chair. So you need to pre-bend in order to conveniently enter to the root canal. And this was made to overcome the problems with silver alloys. Uh, you see here the back in time, the old pro taper files. It was popular then, but now uh, we cannot use it in 90 degree curves because it leads to cutting on the danger zone, on the inner wall. So it may lead to stripping it may lead to straightening of double curves. And at the same time, it tends to spring back because the austenitic portion is very high in that file. So it tends to straighten the canal. It tends to uh, uh, spring back and transport on the outer wall. So it will destroy the canal. That's why we need an alloy like the MG3 blue alloy, nickel, heat treated nickel titanium. So that when I enter in this curve, it will maintain the shape without creating here transportation as with, and with minimal cutting on the danger zones. So you will preserve the anatomy and this is an important objective during shaping. Okay, so let's see here the uh, uh, pre-bendable uh, instrument from uh, MG3 Blue. We have here uh, MG3 Blue file. We can pre-bend it. Of course, we do not pre-bend it in an S shape before entering. We just give it a curve for convenience like this one. But the S shape that I'm doing here is like this. I will repeat it. I, I'm doing an S shape here. This is the type of bending that the canal will do for the file. When I have an S shape curve, the canal will make the file S shape and the file will shape without changing that S shape. Understand this? Uh, this is the case that I showed you uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, the radix intermolaris. And you can see here that the file, the 3004, the 3004 in the right side is taking the curve without changing, without changing the anatomy. 
So what do I need more? And here, with a difficult case with four portal of exit and different curvatures, I have smooth shaping of the root canal without any problems, without altering the natural anatomy. Okay, that is the value of having controlled memory effect in our files with no transportation liability. Also, when we have uh, 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 um, uh, when we have a uh, uh, heat treated file like the blue files it will have an enhanced an enhanced cyclic fatigue resistance as i said uh, the fracture resistance comes from the metallurgy and also comes from the kinematics so you have to understand this well because when you adjust in a difficult case when you adjust the kinematics in your tr rap moto uh, 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 to uh, uh, atr or to uh, reciprocation, this will increase the time to fracture. And when we use a blue alloy like the MG3 blue, we also have enhanced fracture resistance. Now it comes the time for the design of these files. What do we need to know? The tapers, we have a lot of tapers, but for simplicity, we are, we are going to constant tapers, constant tapers, like the pyramid, I'm from Egypt. And uh, uh, we have this uh, monument, the, the pyramid, it's very famous. It is, the pyramid is a constant taper, okay? It starts with a small size and each increment or each distance, it increase continuously in a constant, constant way. This, uh, uh, you can see here on this uh, uh, slide that we have the PX, the uh, glide path file in the MG3 blue, we have constant taper of uh, uh, 3%. Other file from the same uh, company, uh, Perfect Endo, we have 15, 4%. This means that each millimeter, the file increase with the increment three, okay? So at the tip, it's size 15, and then after one millimeter, uh, uh, it becomes 18 and so on. The same for the shapers, the 2004, 20, and increase in the next increment by four, it becomes 24. This is important when you are dealing with curves because you have to calculate to which length this file should go. The second is the cross section. The cross section design we have for the starter files or the orifice opener in both systems, we have a uh, uh, 20, 10%, but we have short uh, uh, working part because these instruments with large metal core with uh, uh, um, active cutting edges and convex triangular, we have large metal core. We don't need to go down into the middle part of the root canal because there is curvature, they will break with the curvature. The aim of using this file with their cutting efficiency and larger size is to eliminate the coronal dentine resistance so as to be able to safely go to the middle and apical part without any transportation or fracture of the files. They are used in brushing motion, of course. Uh, the shapers like the MG3 Blue 2004, for example, the 2504, the 2506, and all the assortments have smaller, smaller, we have smaller uh, cross section like the uh, uh, triangular cross section. These files are made to body shaping, to body shape the canal, the, the, the middle part. I need to shape the middle part of the root canal with these files, so I need to have reduced metal core. This will impose some flexibility on the file because I increase the size of the file, so I need the metal core less. So uh, these files are used for middle and apical shaping with a zone pecking motion. So I do not go one uh, time down to the area that I want, to the full length, for example. No, I pack in zones and get out, irrigate, and then I go another bite in the root canal deeper, and then I go back, just like the woodpecker, he packs into the wood and then it comes out, clears the beat and go down again, okay? Also, we have something about the helix 
the helix in all the file of perfect endo is reverse helix. This is a very smart feature because we want the debris to go along the helix and go up, not down. Previously, we were having files from other companies that have a, a, a downward helix. So when you go down the root canal, especially in reciprocation motion, you push debris down beyond the apex, post-operative pain, clogging of the apical third. But now we have coronal channeling of debris, and this will decrease the clogging of the instrument and reduce the torsional load so the instrument can survive difficult situation inside the root canal. The last is the pitch. The pitch is the tone, how the uh, uh, flutes are close or away from each other. Back in the 90s, we were having the uh, profile, the profile uh, file system. It was like a screw, constant pitch. Every half millimeter, for example, or every one millimeter, uh, there is a flute. This is like screwing uh, uh, a nail in wood with a screwdriver. It will go down, screwing tendency. And also, it push debris down. So nowadays, in MG3 Blue and also in the Gold, we have progressive pitch. Smaller distance between the apical flutes and gradually increasing in the coronal part as we reach the D16. So we don't have any more that screw in tendency. We don't have pushing down the debris beyond the apex with post-operative pain. And also this will lead to less torsional load on the instrument and the instrument can survive any difficult situation or uh, survive fractures. And don't forget the pitch and the previous feature, which is the reverse helix, both contributes to coronal channeling of debris. Okay. Let's see here. This is the uh, uh, pre flaring file, the MG3 gold. Uh, uh, I used it before I entered down the root canal. So you can see here without irrigation in an MB2, I can see the debris are not coming from the apex, but they are extruded through the coronal chamber. See, this is very important for your patient. Another file from Perfect Endo is a, 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 a mono gold file. And you will see here, sorry, you will see here. Uh, uh, sorry, the video is not working. Okay, it's working. You can see here in slow motion how this file is pre flaring the root canal while evacuating debris in the coronal part. And I was intending not to use irrigation here to show you how this file efficiently evacuates debris. So that the previous part in the presentation that we just finished is about what we know. Now let's move to what we should do because we know the features, we know the kinematics, we know the design, we know the uh, metallurgy, but how to assemble this, how to make use of this feature into a clinical situation. So now we are talking about safe and predictable root canal shaping through a very, very important steps. Not necessary in that order, but these should be fulfilled before you shape the root canal with larger sizes. So the first step, and I repeat, this can be performed in no order. I can do one before the other. The scouting and patency, the pre-flaring, and the glide path preparation. You should not intend to shape your root canal to, for example, 30 or four without performing these steps. Sometimes we pre-flare first, and then we go scout and patency, determine the working lens, and then we do glide path preparation. Sometimes we do scouting and patency with manual file, then we pre-flare more, then we do glide path, and then we shape, okay? It's not in this order only. You have to be flexible as your MG3 files. You have to be flexible in your mind too. So the first or one uh, of the steps is the scouting and patency and the motion should be watch winding. And I'm putting the uh, watch here uh, uh, 
to remind you that the watch winding motion is important in establishing patency and to scout the route. Okay, so the first rule for patency and scouting, proceed till resistance. Great. What about the, uh, 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 I find some resistance in Rook Canal, stop. Stop, pre-curve the file, and you might have a different direction in the Rook Canal, okay? Then we should use small files, six, eight, 10, or a sequence of six, then eight, then 10 according to the side of the canal. Why small K files? Because the small K files can take an impression of the root canal. When you go with the file eight or 10 down a curved root canal with a watch winding motion, and you just snatch the file from the root canal, you will find it taking the curve. You can put it on your ruler and you can divide your root canal into segments, zones, through which you perform your crown down technique. Okay, so this is very important. Sometimes in difficult canals, when we are not uh, 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 able to perform easy scouting and patency, sometimes we use short file, the 21 millimeter hand files, but this is optional. Why to use a short file? Because I need the pressure from my finger close to the point of action, which is the tip of the file. Okay, so this is important. When the canal is easy, this doesn't matter. But if the canal is difficult and almost uh, 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 narrow, like we say, not classified, but narrow, we need to use more uh, file uh, uh, in order to, uh, short file in order to be able to uh, effectively uh, negotiate the canal. And EDTA gel. Here is a controversial issue about EDTA. EDTA, I use it only, strictly only in the step of scouting and patency. And other than this, I don't use it. Why don't I use it in shaping, for example, with a rotary file, I put sodium hypochlorite, and then I take EDTA gel on the uh, uh, file and go inside the canal uh, in the presence of sodium hypochlorite. This is nonsense because the EDTA components in the gel uh, uh, will, neutralize the sodium hypochlorite. So neither of them would work. And all, an additional point, sodium hypochlorite already has a lubricant action. So only in the step of scouting and patency, we can use EDTA gel. The first step of the watch winding is the gentle precurvature. You can use the perfect endo uh, file bender. It's a very uh, a nice device uh, to bend files, to pre-curve files. And if you still didn't get this uh, tool, you can just, uh, I will repeat the video here, you just uh, take it on your thumb and just impose a, 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 a very gentle curvature. This will allow the file to take the anatomy, okay? Then, we do back and forth motion, then pull. Back and forth and pull. Back and forth and pull. And then irrigate and repeat, taking deep bite of the root canal, deeper portion, okay? Until you find the file reach to the apex, maybe with, a, with a, 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 an apex locator, for example, okay? This is very important. So now you gently pre-curve the file, then insert it, back and forth oscillations and pull, back and forth oscillation to cut dentin and pull, and then irrigate, remove the abris, and insert the file until you reach the end of the route or the average length. And when do I stop? I stop when I reach super loose size 10K. Okay, but wait a minute. You told us two slides before that uh, I can start with six in a narrow canal. Yes, you will do the same with the six until it is super loose. And then you take the eight and do the same until it's super loose. And the safety, the initial safety point in this step is reached when you reach a sensation of super loose size 10K. What is the meaning of a super loose size 10K? This means that I can just put it at the orifice and press with my finger 
without any watch winding, and then I can reach the end of the loop. This is loose. It needs uh, uh, no more cutting, no more watch winding. Okay, this is the initial safety achieved. Then we go to the pre flaring. The rationale for pre flaring uh, is to eliminate the resistance as marked here. Uh, if you see my cursor here, there is a, a, a triangle at the orifice. This is the pericervical dentine. We need to relieve, not completely remove, of course, because if I completely remove this, this means a bad access cavity. This means uh, uh, decreased fracture resistance of the tooth. So I need just to pre-flare, flaring, just reducing the resistance. And uh, it enhances the tactile feedback of your hand files and it facilitates patency. This means that sometimes when I cannot achieve patency except to the, this point, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, beginning of the middle third. So don't push, you proceed to resistance and you cannot go deeper. So you take out your hand files, then get your starter file, the 20, uh, uh, 10 MG3 blue and start pre-flaring in a brushing motion. And what is a brushing motion? This means that passively in, insert the file in the root canal, just two or three millimeters down the root canal, and then you go out to the outer wall. And to simplify this, I brush on the name of the canal. What does this mean? In the mesiobuccal canal, I brush on the mesial wall and the buccal wall. In the distal buccal canal, I brush on the distal wall and the buccal wall, avoiding any stripping action on the danger zone, okay? We agree that we brush on the name of the root canal using the stopper file, which is in our case, 20-10%. And you can see here on the left side, we have the hand files going with resistance and then we pre-flare, this is just pre-flaring, this is not shaping to relieve any resistance on the file because many, many colleagues uh, uh, suffer broken files because they didn't have uh, sufficient convenience for the file in the coronal part. It's not about only the apical part or the narrow part, no. It's about, in the first place, the coronal resistance. Here, we used to take our file down this narrow uh, uh, orifices, just open the access, take the file, and go to the working lens that will try to reach the working lens, no. In difficult cases, curved canals, narrow orifices, I just take my starter file, 20-10%, and I brush. This is only pre-flaring. You know, the value of this also is that the file, the file is uh, 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 creating a, a reservoir for the irrigant. So I can place here the irrigation, but here if I place the irrigation, it will not enter the root canal. So here it goes into the root canal, and at the same time, it, the file, the successive file will go down and uh, 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 taking, activating the sodium hypochlorite. So it creates free flaring, creates a reservoir for irrigant, uh, uh, for efficient cleaning and uh, 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 debridement of the root canal. And as you can see here, this is the ir irrigation reservoir uh, created by the pre flaring uh, of the MG3. I gave here an example about the similar start of fire, but with a gold alloy. And wh what is beautiful in uh, uh, perfect endo that we have uh, uh, a lot of alloys. We can use different alloys for treating different anatomies. So let's uh, discuss this case after we know about pre-flaring, after we know about the glide path, the corona resistance, we have a, a severe curvature in the coronal part. This is way, way more dangerous than apical curvature because the file has to go this way, this way, and then bend again. This very difficult. And of course, this is a two-dimensional image. Maybe we have in the third dimension another bend in the root canal. So what we did to reach the successful outcome of shaping and treatment is to do this. Let's see my sequence with MG3 blue in this difficult case. The first, I use the starter in passive insertion and brushing motion in order to relieve some of the dentine resistance, which is massive here at the orifice. And then I go with the PX or the glide path file 1503 
uh, or sometimes 1504, uh, to have the root canal. Only have the root canal. Why? Because this minute file, this small file, will also pre-flare, but on a deeper level. Because as we saw on the uh, uh, constant taper slide, this file increase the taper until it reach about 80 in the uh, coronal part or 70, 70 or 80. So it pre-flare. So it accentuate the pre-flaring on a deeper level. Then it is clear now to go down with my scouting file and try to scout and also to uh, uh, achieve patency and determination of the working length. Okay, but this is not the end because I have to take this file, the PX, again to the full working lens after I achieved patency. See, here we do a pre flaring, then we do deeper pre flaring with a smaller file, and then we achieve patency, and then we created a glide path. Okay. So you have to modify your sequence and the sizes according to the featured anatomy. After this step, you can go with any file. In this case, I went with uh, 20.04 and 25.04, full length, debridement and shaping, and the case is closed. For the distal route, it was a cute route, uh, no curvature except in the gentle curvature in the apical part. So I take the 35.04, single length, using reciprocation without the need for anything, any patency, and it's called manual list mechanical preparation. So before we go to the glide path preparation, we need to discuss some tips and tricks for optimizing the apex locator function, because uh, after patency and pre-flaring, whichever was the first, we need to uh, 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 understand how to improve our uh, uh, performance uh, with the apex locator. And as I told you, the ZRF Indo motor has an integrated apex locator. Uh, usually, my personal preference, I do not uh, simultaneously measure while shaping. I just take the motor, press the uh, apex locator function, and I measure, then I get out the, uh, uh, the cord for the apex locator, switch the program to shaping, and shape the root canal. If I need to reconfirm, I confirm later with the apex locator only. But some colleagues might find it uh, easier uh, to uh, work simultaneously with the uh, while shaping and uh, determining the working length. So let's go to the 10 tips and tricks to enhance or optimize the apex locator function. First tip is the isolation. Primary isolation using rubber dam stabilized by clamps. This is the main thing and no dam, no endo. You have to remember that. Then sometimes we have badly decayed teeth, uh, badly broken down teeth, uh, uh, proximal decay. We need to secondarily adjust the isolation with a light cue gingival barrier or liquid dam material. So as to confine my irrigation within the pulp chamber. Uh, other, other colleagues might uh, spend some time in building up the pre-endo buildup. I'm not a fan of the pre-endo pre buildup because it consumes time, especially if I'm going to finish the case in a single session. The second tip is to select the proper size corresponding to the canal size, relevant to the canal size, because we cannot have an oval canal in a mandibular premolar single canal and I take file 10 or six and try to uh, measure the root canal. For your knowledge, the, uh, the hand file must be touching the circumference of the root canal in the apical part. That's why if you chose a small file in a wide canal, it will touch in places and it will not touch in other places. So it gives an erratic reading up and down, up and down, up and down. So oh, how can I, I stop this? When you feel this, you have to increase the file size until you, you feel a tactile sensation of apical binding, okay? The file is binding, not uh, screwed in, but it's binding. You, 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 file the, uh, you feel that the, the canal, the apical part of the root canal is holding the file uh, to some extent, okay? And this is important in the last three to four millimeters of the root canal, okay? Number three, 
keep your file away from metallic restoration sometimes and uh, one of my uh, uh, published research in the journal of endodontics about non-surgical endodontics uh, uh, through existing fixed restoration so uh, uh, a lot of cases were treated with success under magnification with a specific protocol but sometimes we have a pfm restoration and this pfm has a metal and when you are uh, uh, measuring the uh, uh, root canal length using your apex locator, the metal is a conductor for electricity and sometimes it gives you, oh, you reach the apex, but the fact that it touches the metal, so it feels as if it is reaching the apex. So we need, we need to isolate the files, the coronal part of the file from, the, uh, 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 from this metal. The first easy tip is to use flowable composite, flowable resin composite, without etching or bonding on the metal rim and you start doing your uh, 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 working lens determination step. Uh, this is the easy one. Another, uh, another, uh, uh, another thing is to wrap Teflon tape, sterile Teflon tape on the coronal part of the uh, file so it isolates. So it's all about isolating the metal of the uh, uh, restoration from the metal of the file so as to achieve uh, reliable reading. In complex situations, sometimes we need time. This is tip number four. The device may show some delay in processing. So uh, these cases, the difficult cases might be uh, persistent discharge or weeping canals. So you need to uh, 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 dry, irrigate wide apices, wide apices because uh, the wide apex, not necessarily uh, a wide open apex or immature tooth, but sometimes we have apical resorption, so the apex is wide. And we will discuss this in our courses uh, with Total Core about uh, how to manage open apices. Uh, uh, so I select maybe a larger file. Sometimes we select a plugger, an endodontic plugger of larger size to fit the canal size. Retreatment cases with remnants of materials on the wall might delay the reading and long narrow canals or double curved root canals. So take time until you reach uh, the, the, uh, your uh, point, which is the apex. T tip number five is about the battery because don't use the apex locator where, of course, uh, in, in case uh, the ZR app, we have both in one uh, uh, device, but when your device shows uh, one uh, signal for the battery, don't use it. You can use it, you, you can use it with the files because the file rotates, although it has uh, some uh, disadvantage because it may uh, affect the torque uh, uh, of the file and the uh, motion. But uh, with Apex Locator, never use the device in this state because it will not give proper readings. It's about electricity here, no sufficient electricity. Uh, uh, when you have two marks, readings are not reliable and may be erratic. So take care, you have to reconfirm. If you don't have your charger, you have to reconfirm maybe with a radiograph. Good to go and the best device performance. So ensure that your Apex locator is always in this or that state. And another tip about the battery, uh, don't charge it frequently. You use it full or just one uh, 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 mark less and then uh, when it becomes two marks, like this situation or one mark, only change. If you charge your battery while in this or that state, this will decrease the lifetime of your battery. Okay, confirm patency and retract. This means when you reach the full length while you're attaching your apex locator with size six, you can just go down to uh, 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 zero point. Sometimes we go one millimeter and then we get back. This will make the sensor in the apex locator sense the difference between inside and outside the tooth. And you repeat that with any patency file, but beyond size 10 in, uh, in most of the canal, do not go beyond because from 10 to 15, that's large transition and you, you won't uh, uh, be needing uh, uh, some irritation in the apical part. Real-time monitoring. This is tip number seven, because I do not measure the working lens only once. I measure it after access, if it's possible. I mean, before pre-flaring. And after that, I do pre-flaring and I measure again. Why? Because 
when you have coronal resistance, the cervical triangle, okay, this means the canal is, for example, 21. When you relieve this, the canal become more straight in the coronal part so the length theoretically must be decreasing. So if you work on the initial length that was 21, for example, you might, in some cases of curved canal, you might find at the end of the treatment that the master cone is bypassing the apex. And sometimes we confirm before taking our master cone radiograph, we confirm the lens using the uh, shaping file. So I take the shaping files, uh, uh, um, 25 or four or 25 or six MG3 blue after finishing shaping and I put it to the full length and attach my apex locator uh, uh, in the uh, ZRF motor and uh, 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 reconfirm the working lens. These steps should be done in order to achieve uh, optimum results from your apex locator. Tip number eight is go green. Don't, if you, if you are not able to reach the uh, uh, end of the root canal, pay attention that you cannot stop here, for example, and say, okay, here's at two, I will increase another increment two millimeters for example no here the file is not measuring because the canal is tapered wide the file is not touching once the file starts giving green reading or coming uh, 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 to the uh, uh, apical area okay and in the, on the motor it, you will find uh, two three uh, two one and zero for example so once you get into the apical part you can you can be in the comfort zone of working lens determination a precision zone okay uh, tip number nine is do not trust the unstable readings let me show you here uh, uh, this video about uh, a different brand of apex locator uh, it's not that good but uh, apex locator when you enter with your file it gives you uh, apex reading and then it comes up apical reading and comes up. This is called unstable reading or erratic uh, apex locator reading. So what to do? First, I should check the uh, file size and be sure that with each insertion, each increment, I go down the root canal, the meter on the apex locator will go down with me. If I go down and the meter or the LCD display go up, this means something is wrong. Um, if you're doubtful, don't forget that we have two methods to confirm the uh, uh, working lens, which is the apex locator. This is the most uh, reliable device to measure the working lens because uh, uh, radiograph is two dimensional, but in cases, while I am doubtful about my reading, I have to take a radiograph. The best is to confirm with both methods. So these are 10 tips for optimum uh, results from your Apex looking. So back in order not to be lost in the middle, uh, um, safe and predictable root canal shaping using MG3 Blue, we have scouting and patency pre flaring. Sometimes we substitute the pre flaring in the first and taking the scouting and patency after. Uh, then we determine the working lens and the final step, which give me safety, after which I can go into the root canal to the apical part without any fear using any size, of course, according to the anatomy, uh, is a glide pass preparation. So uh, let's see this uh, uh, funny uh, assumption. This is a roller coaster in the Netherlands. Uh, it's, uh, it was, it's scary, very scary. And uh, when I stand on the, uh, in front of this roller coaster and I uh, thought about the uh, final destination movie thing, uh, what about if these guys uh, won't be attached well to the, uh, to the roller coaster, to the seats? What will happen? What will happen or if the seat is not fixed to the rail of the roller coaster? What will happen is that on their way up, they will fly. In which direction? Nobody knows. They will fly anywhere. That's what happens when you take a mechanical file, a rotary file, and you put it in the root canal without creating a smooth path from the coronal part to the apical part. The file, the rotary file, will not follow easily the anatomy, especially when difficult. So it may perforate, it may create a ledge, it may break. 
okay? So the glide path preparation is very important. And again, thanks Perfect Endo for providing a lot of sizes, but we are discussing here the PX, that 1503. See, 15, 18, and you can count 16 increments until reaching the coronal part of the file. 1503 is a very nice file, especially with the blue alloy. So let's discuss a lot of cases, a lot of cases. And I hope I, I didn't make it long in, the, in, uh, in this part of the presentation. And I hope uh, I will be receiving questions at the end, of course. How to customize your uh, shaping? Uh, for your knowledge, this uh, is a very important article it's present on the website of Stelis Italiano in Atlantic, and it's present in Roots magazine uh, in uh, uh, 2022 and uh, in a, a magazine in uh, South Africa uh, about uh, the blue power. I created this name, the blue power, because really this file system is powerful in shaping the anatomy. Maybe, maybe it's of uh, 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 the cutting efficiency is not that aggressive, but it is gentle and as needed in difficult curve in uh, 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 deep splits as the image on the uh, slide right now. So let's see the sequence of the MG3 blue. We have the SV file or the starter or the orifice opener 20, 10%. We discussed all this. So it has a controlled memory effect. With this large size, due to the, the metallurgy of the blue uh, uh, MG3, uh, we can prebend. Imagine that you have a short file that can be prebent, and I can use it with this uh, considerable taper to remove the coronal dentine resistance. That's power. That's power. That's why this is part of the blue power. Short working lens with nine millimeter only. This is in order not to accidentally go that deeper in the root canal. So I just need a, a couple of millimeters in order to pre-flare with this file. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a 19 millimeter overall lens. So it is very convenient in limited mouth opening to create a pre-flaring. And uh, to remind you, it's a convex triangular cross section, meaning that it had high strength of the blades, uh, uh, high cutting efficiency, and strength because of the high metal core. But with this cross section, don't go deeper than three millimeters in the root canal. And don't forget, we brush according to the name of the root canal. The second file in uh, uh, the MG3 blue is the PX or the navigator, or I prefer to call it the glider. Uh, 1503 for glide path preparation, of course, we don't have to repeat that it is a controlled memory file. And it is a controlled memory file. And at the same time, it's not that soft because we need some uh, uh, strength in glide path file because it is the navigator. It navigates the root canal and uh, 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 the root canal. Uh, is my uh, voice is clear because something, uh, somebody is saying something is wrong. Can anybody write in the chat? Is it clear? All is good, All nothing. Is good. Thank you, yeah. Muhammad. Thank you, Muhammad. Okay. Uh, no restoring forces, so it doesn't spring back. It doesn't spring back, no transportation in this critical step, it's, it's glide path. And it has a very nice cross section, the parallelogram cross section. This means that the angles, the blades are not touching, uh, uh, the, not all the blade touching the root canal. This means that I have spaces for efficient debris evacuation. Only, only 50% of the uh, instrument is in contact with the canal wall. So we have less torsional load. This meaning that the stresses on the file is less. And of course, with a parallelogram cross section, the file glides like a snake inside the root canal. The G1 file, the shaping file 2004, is a shaping file with controlled memory effect. And I show you this video. It's very nice. In a deep split, like the diagram on the screen, I can pre-bend it, insert it manually as a manual file until I feel the binding and then attach the motor and go down the split, okay? The 25 
or four, the 25 or six. I don't have to go uh, with both. According to the anatomy, I select my file, like I will show you in the cases, uh, the same behavior, except that it's uh, uh, small sizes uh, uh, and uh, uh, small uh, small taper and small and large taper, O4, O6. I can use them for shaping. And guess what? If I lost my uh, uh, orifice opener, I can use the apical part of the 25 or 6 for pre-flaring. So I can reduce the sizes, the, the number of files to one file less if I don't have, for example, the 10% uh, uh, taper. Let's see here this video. This is an MB2. I'm bending the orifice opener, the uh, uh, starter, and I'm using reciprocation. Can you see the debris coming out? As long as you have debris coming out from the root canal, you are on the right track. Once there is no debris, then you are transporting, okay? So these files have efficient debris, pre-bendable, safe, and predictable in shaping. Another advantage, which is not present in many, many files, that we have taper and length mark marking on the, uh, uh, on the files. So uh, one mark is for 3%, two mark for 4%, three marks for 6%. And additionally, we have precise length marking, markings that will mark the working length if it is 18, 19, 20, or 22. These are the marks on the file. So if you have multiple canals with the same length, I can just drag the stopper and fix it at the working length, for example, 20 in the whole canal. I don't have each time to measure, each time to measure. Of course, I need to confirm, but this can speed up the procedure in uh, uh, teeth with the same working length in all the root canals. So let's see a high difficulty case, a high difficulty case like a, 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 a trifurcated maxillary premolar. First, we do the axis, we do pre-flaring, but when we have a deep split in the buckar root, like in this case, I cannot pre-flare uh, with a stone. I cannot pre-flare with a file that deep. I need to pre-flare with uh, uh, medium power ultrasonics. And again, don't worry about some uh, things about the retreatments and the use of ultrasonics because we will have a specific course for that. We have a chat message. Clear, clear. Thank you. Uh, then we uh, start the sequence. We need to pre-flare, but the orifices is not in the top. The orifices are not on the top. The orifices of the split in the apical part. So I need to pre-flare not with the uh, 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 intro file, not with the orifice opener because it's already uh, 19 total length. So I need to take the 25 or four because the tooth is very thin and pre-bend it and insert it into the strip, uh, the, the split, and then I activate the motor. So I do a pre-flaring on a deeper level in the split using 25 or four. But you told us that this file is for shaping. No, you can use any file in any way for any function. Why? Because you are the boss, you are the clinician. So here you decided that you want to pre-flare a very tiny orifice with 25 or four. Yes, because you cannot enlarge this canal to 35, for example. So it's about balance. Then once we pre-flare just two millimeters, we use the PX, the glide path in the same way. Pre-curve, insert manually, attach your motor, activate, go down to the working lens and withdraw, okay? Now, now we have pre-flared uh, deep split and we have a glide path in the split. What we do is shaping. So we can now shape in the same way with the 20 or four with the same manual insertion and activation. And then for both, of course, and then we, uh, uh, go for full length shaping using 25 or 4. Why I didn't go to 25 or 6? 
anatomy. I cannot fight with anatomy. I saw that this is the perfect size to reach in this difficult situation, in this highly difficult situation. And we can here uh, see the orifices deeper in the root canal. We can see the down pack. We can see the obturation in two angulations. So uh, don't worry about the anatomy. What, however, uh, 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 or um, uh, sorry, uh, if the anatomy is very difficult, you can shape it with proper selection of your alloy. And in these cases, I prefer the MG3 blue. Moderate difficulty cases, or a case with moderate difficulty, let's see here the, uh, uh, this molar with a, a very strong and large uh, uh, cervical dentine triangle. And we have narrow canal. You cannot say it's calcified because the, the tooth cannot be calcified in the middle while it uh, have a patent orifice and patent apical part. So it's narrow. Probably it's a narrow canal only. So I use the starter or see here, I can use the 2506. So I use the starter or the apical part of the 2506 to mechanically pre-flare to remove this red triangle. And then I go down with scouting and patency and then with a glide path, full length, not like the other. And uh, uh, then I start shaping. Here we have in the middle part, in the body of the canal, we have a narrow part. So having a narrow part in the root canal, this means that I should be easy on this part. So I prefer to uh, do a variable length shaping by taking size to the mid root and increase that size in the same area. Then when this area is shaped, I can go later to the full length. This is called variable length sequence. So here I use the 20, 2004, then the 2004, till the uh, 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 middle part. And after I confirmed patency again with the file that everything is going good, I took the 2506 easy from the 24, uh, two thirds of the root canal to the full length finishing with 25 of it. If the canal is uh, 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 ready to receive the 304 or 3504, it's okay. You have to decide that uh, uh, in the clinical situation. And you can see here, I took an X-ray with the uh, uh, glide path file and see how it's taking the anatomy without any transportation, just like the hand file. So uh, uh, this is an amazing uh, 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 glide path file. And here is the post operation and we reached already to 30 or four. For uh, low difficulty cases, uh, uh, this is an example about uh, retreatment. Um, um, we disassemble the, the, the crown, the intracanal, uh, inter, intracanal material using the uh, monogold, and we will have a different session on this amazing file. Then we perform scouting. Uh, why I didn't perform pre-flaring? Come on, guys. I removed with 25 or six, the gutta percha. The canal is already pre-flared before from the previous treatment. I just rehabilitate the root canal. So I just perform uh, full length scouting and using reciprocation motion, I take the 2506 down the root canal in a single length stroke. The same here, but for the palatal root, the palatal root was very wide and similar to the case uh, that I show you uh, in the beginning, just a uh, single length down the root canal in reciprocation, case closed. And here is the uh, uh, confit and the post of uh, uh, radiograph. This case, I like it very much because it has all the features. If we have an S-shaped uh, uh, mesia root or mesia root canal, we have a cervical dentine triangle, very large, and I need to simplify my sequence. So. What I did here, the pre-flared the, uh, um, the root canal with 2506, mechanical pressureless pre-flaring. Don't press, just like the pressure of a brush, okay? And don't forget, we mechanically pre-flared the root canal with a brushing motion according to the name of the root canal. So in the mesial buckle, I take it to the mesial wall and the buccal wall for removal of coronal interference, insertion following the anatomy, then output brushing. Then we decide 
the working lens using the apex locator. Let's see videos of this case. On the left side, you can see here the 3004. Let's see how the 3004 MG3 Blue is performing. See, smooth, smooth, no pressure. Just pre let the file, let the file take the anatomy and you go with the file. And we stop here and see that we have debris. We don't have debris in the coronal part. We have debris in the middle and apical part. This is ideal because you already pre-fled with a 2546 and now you have debris only. This file has relieved stresses in the coronal part and acting on the most important part for this file, which is a middle and apical. And after I finished that, I wanted to test this uh, blue file, this MG3 blue file. Uh, will it follow the anatomy or it will change the shape of the root canal? And as you can see on the left side, uh, it's perfectly following the anatomy. Then we go to the other root canal. This is the Miju buckle. Easy, easy on the file, smooth. And you can see that it extruding debris to the coronal part, you irrigate to flush out debris. And don't forget, when you irrigate, uh, uh, I sometimes use both irrigants, the EDTA solution and the sodium hypochlorite solution, no gel, as we agreed. Why EDTA solution? Because it has debris emulsification action. It takes out debris instead of uh, making settling in the root canal. And we will have a lot of sessions about that in our courses, in our coming courses. Then we achieve full lens shaping in the distal, sorry. Using what? Using the 3004 single length, irrigate, then you insert the 35 single length reciprocation, you finish your case. Then we start obturation and I'm a, um, I'm a user of the bioceramic sealers and you can see here confluent root canals. Confluent means type two. So we inject the bioceramic sealer and this is a type time lapse on obturation and I promise you that I will have uh, uh, special courses on obturation, uh, uh, whether uh, in webinars or uh, in person. Okay, this is the distal obturation, warm vertical compaction, and this is the full case. What do I need more? I only need MG3 blue. This is the case that we uh, uh, discussed in the beginning with a pre flaring uh, using the uh, MG3 Gold 2506. Uh, I felt comfortable to cut more aggressively with the uh, 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 2506 MG3. Uh, uh, gold, and then I completed the case with the uh, uh, blue, like I showed you before. This is a repeated video, but now you understand the advantage of the step down pressureless uh, uh, preparation. This is reciprocation also, and you can see here pop tissue also as debris coming out, not pushed down. And this is the confit, and here is the down pack. And here is the full case of this radix intumularis. I think this would be the last case. Uh, this is a difficult case of retreatment of uh, non-surgical endodontic treatment, not retreatment, uh, through existing fixed restoration. And you can check this article in the Journal of Endodontics uh, we published in 2021 uh, uh, on the outcome of treatment through existing uh, fixed restoration. Sorry, it's in 22. This is uh, uh, an error in typing. So we start with uh, seeing uh, what's going on with this tooth, sorry. And I will let you see the full treatment protocol. We are suspecting the presence of an MB2, very tiny and notorious MB2. Uh, and we need to negotiate because we cannot leave behind any uh, casualties. So first of all, first of all, we need to relieve the coronal resistance. The coronal uh, uh, resistance is not only about the triangle. Sometimes we have overhanging walls and roof. So the best is to use the ultrasonics. 
we'll discuss it later about the medium power ultrasonics. This is a, a, a ET20 uh, a D diamond coated ultrasonic to relieve the uh, resistance over the distobuccal root canal. Okay, here is debris and also we trough grooves and we go to the mesobuccal complex troughing conservatively using ultrasonic. We cannot do this with high speed uh, cutters like the uh, uh, air turbines, we cannot do this. And then we start scouting the floor for the MB2. We use the pre-curved size 10K file. And here you can see under high magnification that the orifice is nasty with severe coronal curvature. This needs caution because the other canals, it will just uh, uh, be shaped and finished in three minutes, not more. So uh, we uh, switch to an ultrasonic activator and uh, we used this ultrasonic activator in order to relieve any resistance over the, uh, uh, the orifice, which is very tiny, very tiny. Uh, so we use very thin ultrasonic tip in an outward, like the brushing motion in order to remove the overhanging thin over the MB2. Can you see now on our high magnification, we start to see clearly a little bit, but still the canal is going in a very difficult direction. See, I'm bending the ultrasonic tip into the palatal direction. This is very difficult. So I need to take care of that. Then we start pre-flaring. In a difficult canal, like we did in the premolar, I won't be able to use the, uh, the starter. I, I won't be able to use the 2506. I only can use the 2504 for pre-flaring in this difficult canal. Maybe in other canals, I can use the starter or the 2506. Here, you see the curving. See, amazing, amazing metallurgy. And then we insert pre-curved. Then we activate the motor and we brush and go out. Okay. Then I use a glider. And this is a, a, a teaser for the uh, next uh, course or webinar about the gold file. This is similar to the PX, but with uh, uh, more uh, austenite, the gold uh, navigator. I insert it manually and then attach the motor and I start see the debris, debris are coming out. Debris are coming out. You are on the safe path. Don't worry about anything. Debris are coming. If you have any obstruction, go out. Don't complete. Then we go to my favorite file in this situation, which is the MG3 Blue 2004. Things become easy now. Reciprocation also. You can use it in rotation or ATR. If, uh, suit yourself. Create your own sequence. You are the boss. And zone pecking coming out. Irrigate, don't forget to irrigate, especially with EDTA because uh, it gets out the uh, debris. Here's a 25 for four. Things become more easy right now. Remember, this is the file that we pre-flared for just a couple of millimeters. Now it enters to the full working lens easy. And we also peck and brush, peck and brush because this is a difficult root canal. Then we go to the other root canals with single file, single length, no worries about anything. And here is the distal buckle, 25 or four easy because I removed the overhanging uh, the roof using the ultrasonics. 25.04 for the Miji buckle. This is a detailed sequence of the two. 25.04 MG3 blue. A yeah. couple of seconds and you finish. And here you can see completely different situation, completely different situation. Amazing integration in your treatment between the amazing metallurgy 
and the ultrasonics, the arrogance, and you reach the point that you successfully shape the root canal in a predictable way. This is the final uh, uh, situation where we preserved the anatomy and the patient was happy. Uh, I hope I didn't make it long, but uh, I was uh, having a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, so at the end, this take home message, you should remember that the primary objective in endodontics is the treatment and prevention of apical periodontitis. All we have discussed in this webinar was targeting the treatment and prevention of apical periodontitis. Shaping sequence must be determined based on case by case evaluation. Don't take the sequence and put it in all your cases. You will have failures, you will have fractures, you will have ledges, perforation. You have to think more that you are the boss, not others, okay? You create your own sequence, even in the same sequence. And uh, uh, with the MG3 Blue, uh, it's all about managing difficult cases. I, I, I promise you that managing difficult cases like deep splits, curvature, where you don't need that stiff file, that harsh file is for the MG3 Blue. The clinician must have adequate knowledge about kinematics, metallurgical, design, metallurgical features, and file design in order to be able to adapt his or her instruments to the anatomy. And remember, our most notorious and nasty enemy in anatomics is the anatomy. I would like to uh, uh, um, I would like to uh, thank Total Core and of course uh, Dental Perfect China uh, for allowing me to uh, lecture uh, by their name uh, and uh, um, I repeat that we will have a program of interactive webinars and uh, 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 physical in person uh, uh, courses in Dubai in Total Core Academy and. Uh, hopefully in some uh, of the universities there in the United Arab Emirates. And please uh, take a screenshot of this uh, uh, contact of Dr. Ardian uh, in Total Core Group, uh, his email and his contacts because he is uh, the one that will guide you across our program in the coming year. And uh, uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, you can visit uh, this uh, uh, website in order to see some videos of me and uh, my colleagues in Stade Italiano in Atlantics completely free. And you can visit the website for a lot of uh, uh, webinars uh, on different topics. And uh, I uh, advise you to uh, download this free book about the use of rubber diamond in the Dantics. It's free uh, from Stade Italiano in Atlantics. And here are my contacts uh, on uh, uh, email, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and I will be happy to answer your question anytime and uh, see you soon in Dubai. Uh, now, uh, I, I think we can uh, uh, receive question, if any. Uh, uh, yes, Prof. Prof. Ahmad, if possible, uh, to ask a question. And I will ready to answer. Yeah, is it possible to, uh, to ask a question? Uh, if you want to ask anything about the upcoming courses in uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, anything. Uh, Prof. Ahmed, can you hear me? Oh, it seems that uh, nobody wants to ask. That's a good thing. Uh, uh, please, if you're trying to uh, uh, talk, but it's not uh, um, hearable. Maybe you can write. Okay, okay. Uh, can you hear me right now? Okay, now I'm hearing. Go on. Yeah, hi. I hope hi. Uh, it's clear right now. Yeah, thank you, uh, yeah. Dr. Ahmed, for the very good presentation, uh, uh, much enjoyable actually, and uh, informative at the same time. Uh, my name is Mohamed Nassar, assistant professor in the University of Sharjah. Uh, my, my question is that since we deal with students uh, most of the time at a university kind of uh, setting, when we talk about the uh, patency concept, uh, you know, uh, we have some sort of a point of view where we want to delay it, especially in necrotic teeth, 
to make sure that we are not pushing some microbial uh, debris beyond the apex, which might end up with a, a flare up at the second or between appointments. So what's your take on the idea of delaying it a little bit more until some preparation has been done for the canal and then you confirm it later? That, um, that's, uh, you hear me now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, um, that's uh, completely in, in line with what I've had, uh, the option that I gave that sometimes we cannot achieve patency from the beginning. So uh, maybe we can start with the pre-flaring, no harm in that. We start with the pre-flaring and sometimes we go in difficult cases uh, to body shaping uh, also before the termination of the working lens even. So uh, this will... Uh, uh, perform some sort of gross debridement in the coronal part, reduction of the uh, uh, coronal part bacteria so as not to be pushed. And this one of the uh, uh, advantages of the crown down that I, I, I pre-flare the uh, a reservoir for the irrigation and uh, this will minimize the bacteria and debris that can be pushed down. So I completely agree with you that uh, sometimes uh, in uh, necrotic cases, we prefer to uh, pre-flare and uh, shape the body of the root canal before we go down to the full working length. I agree with that. Great. Uh, just one more question, if possible. If you lost patency during the treatment, would you still insist on regaining it or you would obturate without regaining the patency? I wouldn't obturate without patency. Okay, I great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So uh, we want uh, a lot of good questions like this. Thank you, doctor. Uh, it's nice to meet you also uh, from the university stuff in the UAE. So uh, thank you so much for attending my lecture. I am ready for more questions. Actually, you have more questions in the chat, uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I switch between chat and the participants. <laughs> okay. Uh, do, do I need to? Yeah. Do I need to oh. use the bioceramic? Okay. Do I need to use the 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 bioceramic sealer if I'm using carrier based gutta percha? Uh, it's not about. Um, do you uh, need to or not? It's about the, uh, your uh, technique. Nowadays, we have bioceramic sealers that are uh, uh, heat friendly. So um, we have done a lot of cases uh, with the uh, gutta core, for example, uh, uh, and the uh, heat friendly sealer. So you don't have to use, but if you decided to use uh, carrier based obturation and the case selection for this like uh, dilaceration, severely dilacerated, where I cannot apply the classic warm vertical compaction. So I have the option of the warm uh, hydraulic condensation, or I have the option of a carrier based. Uh, in these cases where carrier based obturation is indicated, I can use bioceramic sealers, of course, but it is not an obligation. Uh, the second question is which motion we use uh, uh, these files? continual rotation or reciprocation. I told uh, you in the presentation that it's designed for forward or clockwise 360 rotation. So this is the usual and the basic motion. But if you try to modify your uh, uh, treatment approach, you can use it in reciprocation and you can use it in combined motion based on having a device like uh, I showed you today, the ZR app, because it has the option of selecting between different motion, but it is designed for continuous 360 uh, uh, clockwise rotation. Uh, shall we terminate the instrumentation to, uh, <laughs> that's a con controversial issue, to the zero point or 0.5, uh, and thanks in advance. Uh, for me, there are two points in this question. Uh, I shape to the zero point to exclude any possibilities of leaving uh, pulp tissues. I instrument the root canal, shape the root canal to the zero point. But when I obturate, I perform gauging. Gauging 
uh, allows you to put your master cone at the minor diameter. And if you want a simpler answer than this, because we will discuss obturation in the coming courses, uh, you obturate 0.2, for example, 0.3. Some people obturate 0.5, but the shaping, I believe my school, I was a school that I belong to it, and I shape to the full length. And then I obturate, I cannot of course obturate to the full length, but I will obturate based on gauging and a comb fitting procedure uh, at a shorter, slightly shorter uh, uh, extent. Uh, what do I, if I lost pace, patency halfway through? I assume I already got patency before. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, lost patency halfway through, this is transportation. This is not losing patency, this is deviation of the canal because I can lose patency in the apical part due to a lot of reason and it's called losing patency. But losing patency half the way, that's definitely a transportation. Uh, as a quick uh, uh, review of how we manage that, uh, we need to pre-flare more in order to be able to regain the path into the canal. Any more questions? How uh, uh, to differentiate between constricted narrow and calcified canal? Okay, uh, calcification starts from the uh, area of initial irritation. So our irritation in indentics is a caries, dental caries, and the caries come from the coronal part. So if you have a calcified tooth, you will find the pulp chamber maybe narrowed, maybe having a pulp stone, and maybe totally obliterated. So. What I mean is calcification start from the source of irritation downwards. So when we solve calcification, we use ultrasonic until we reach the patent part. This is a calcified canal. But a narrow canal, you will open the tooth. The pulp chamber is normal. Uh, nothing wrong with it. The orifices, you can negotiate the orifices and you find below the orifices, in the beginning, in the middle part, the body of the root canal, you will find hard time to establish patency across. That's a narrow or constrictive canal. So I hope this uh, um, um, answers the, the question. But we have also a lot of topics about uh, management of uh, calcified canals in upcoming courses. So uh, good evening, everyone, please accept our, oh. This is uh, uh, Dr. Ardian, uh, and also accept my apology uh, for the delay. And uh, it's time to uh, um, to me to ask the question: Are you happy? <laughs> I was. I enjoyed uh, too much being with Total Core and the Perfect Endo, uh, and uh, really thank you for the um, for attending the long uh, presentation. And I hope it wasn't uh, uh, exhausting or uh, boring. Uh, and uh, see you soon in uh, Dubai. Uh, we are coming uh, on the 25th of June, our next course uh, in person in Dubai. Thank you so much. <laughs>